Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, and Josh All. What's up, Browns fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Dogs Podcast presented by Omaha Steaks. Josh All, Justin Charles, no Blake Reniker. So, <laughs> we're laughing because if, uh, if you guys have been with the show for basically since we started, you know uh, Zach Kopp. The name Zach Kopp was uh, one of the original Legend. founders of the Dogs podcast and, and one of the uh, usual hosts until he just wasn't, just kind of stopped coming to the show. So Blake Reniker, he, uh, he even said he's going to pull Zach Kopp today and not come. So Blake <laughs> Reniker, not here today, but we are, we're holding down the fort and we're going to yeah. talk, give you guys some Browns updates. We had a really, really fun activity planned for the show today, but I think we'll hold off. And maybe do that next week if Blake yeah. shows up for that one because I don't think it would be as fun just the two of us. Yeah, I, think I was we need stoked. all three. I, I know stoked. I, was, I went. I, I went made deep. a list. I was yes. like, I starred guys. I was ready to go, but uh, we'll do that next week. We were. I'll just clue you guys in. We were going to do a five round snake draft. <laughs> we were going to pick the top fictional sports characters of all time. We were going to each build a lineup of five guys. Yes. Let you guys vote on it. And Blake threw it all to hell. But oh we'll do it next week because I think that sounds like a really fun idea. So we're, that's what we're going to do next time. But today, we are going to talk about some Browns news. We're going to talk about this Dr. Dustin Nabon. Nabon? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to say it's Nabon. Okay. Dr. Dustin Nabon. I think that sounds a little more professional. It does. Sounds very doctorish. Uh, the Browns just hired. So we'll talk about him and what he's they're expecting him to do with the player personnel through the training staff and all that kind of stuff. Talk a little bit about some of the buzz and hype on Cedric Tillman coming okay. out of OTAs as we are in the summer break waiting for training camp to kick off. And then uh, Justin wanted to talk about the Amari uh, Cooper quote that uh, apparently he's out there making some bold comments on his contract situation. So yes. we're going to talk about that clickbait BS here a little bit later. So okay. before we dive into it all, guys, just please make sure you guys are following the show everywhere at the Dogs Podcast on all the socials. On YouTube, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, tap the notification bell so you guys don't miss anything new. I think that shadow ban starting to get lifted a little bit, yeah. but I'm still getting comments from people here on YouTube saying, hey, it's been like three days and now I'm just now seeing your new episode and, and all this kind of stuff. So if you're not seeing it, let us know. Uh, I don't really know how that's going to help the situation. It just makes us feel better to know that we're not crazy, uh, but we're hopefully getting that fixed, I guess. So whatever, YouTube kind of sucks. But anyhow... <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. If you guys are listening on the Apple podcast, give us a five-star written review and Apple Sp or on Spotify, a five-star rating as well. Those really help out the show and we really, really appreciate it. Last but not least, join the dogs.com, become an official dog pack member. If you guys want to join the Patreon, big perk right now, we got to promo it. Fantasy football starts in just like, well, geez, June 26th, in two months from now, Signups, registration will be closed. We will be divvying up the leagues and figuring everything out and setting dates for the drafts. So right now is the time. Get in, sign up, join the dogs.com, drop us a message, say, hey guys, uh, want to play fantasy football this year? We'll put you on the list. That way we know you are locked in and ready to go. And we will send out more information as the end of August gets closer. But we I can't believe it's almost July. Can't wait. It's insane. But I'm so pumped for fantasy to start back up. Getting that itch, man. Getting a, that itch. Got a lot of expectations. We've been doing the end of this end of the season. <laughs> it's tough being at the top. Me and Justin are doing our dogs fantasy football podcast, by the way. So if you haven't listened to that, yeah, go check that out uh, at the dogs fantasy on YouTube and uh, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Check it out because we're having a lot of fun with that show. But again, join the dogs.com. We've been doing dog back discord shows on Fridays. It's not always going to be on Fridays, it's just kind of how it's fallen the first mm -hmm. couple. And it just so happens that this week we're going to do another one. Kenny Mack is going to be in studio with us. It's going to be me, Justin, Kenny here. We're going to be doing dog pack discord. Basically everybody in the Patreon that wants to just jumps into the discord channel on the stages and they just ask questions, comment, tell us what they're thinking about the Browns. We just have a good time. It's just a fun hangout. And if you've heard any of those episodes, you guys know what's going on. So if you're interested in participating in that, join the dogs.com, become an official dog pack member. So let's kick things off here. Let's talk about this. Dr. Dustin Nobbin. Boy, now I don't know if I want to say Nobbin. Nabin? Okay. We should really look up how to say his name. Dr. Dustin is now a member of the Cleveland Browns staff. 
They hired him as the head of athlete health and performance. I'm just going to go through some notes here and then we'll talk about what it all means, but he's going to oversee the entire training staff. He specializes Browns fans get ready to applaud. He has specializes in injury prevention. Thank you. Jesus. Thank God. Thank, Thank you. God. We, we need that in the worst way. So digging in a little deeper, found out he's, he's a, a holistic chiropractor. He's got certifications in sports medicine, strength and conditioning and musculoskeletal ultrasonography. I don't know what that is. Neither. <laughs> Just wanted we to mention it. Should have looked that up too. <laughs> I'm sure somebody will let us know. Don't know what that is, but it sounds cool. Yeah. Um, so all the all that stuff really means is you know like we're, like we just said alluded to a little bit we've been begging the Browns to do something about all the injuries on this team and this just you know this shows that the Browns listen to our podcast yes so. uh, just after last year I mean uh, was it almost it wasn't comical obviously because we're talking about people's careers and we're talking about their health and stuff like that but it got to a point last year where I was just like what is going on like what is happening just I. I had to do a refresher, right, just on how out of control it got. These were just season-ending oh, injuries, soft okay. tissue, all that. Jacob Phillips, preseason. I mean, that was kind oh, of Oh, wow. You know yeah, you're I mean? going way back. Yeah. Jakeem Grant. Mm-hmm. Jack Conklin. We're not going to do Nick Chubb. That's really Nick had Chubb. nothing to do. Yeah. Deshaun Watson, I feel like we can probably leave off of that as well. Yeah, some of those, like, kind of fluky accidents. Yeah. Uh, Rodney McCloyd. Yep. Jedrick Wills. Yep. Dewan Jones. Maurice Hurst. So all of our tackles. Mm -hmm. And then just some other guys. Michael Woods. um, uh, Dawson Deaton and Drew Forbes. These were all just... And a lot of these guys were beginning of the year. You know what I mean? Training camp. And we, I mean, think about we lost uh, Grant Delpit for a little while. Yeah. Um, Trying to think. The injuries... Um, Juan Thornhill was yeah. up and down all year. All year. Just kind of out of control. Um it's it, to me I like I like the idea of it, right? Because it's the Browns saying, "Hey, we have a situation that kind of feels out of control. Let's bring this guy in and see if he can change the whole process." Cuz I know Blake's been barking about this for Oh yeah. Years. Like what's going on? Can yeah. we, can we hire somebody that <laughs> can, we, whether it was, you know, therapists or whatever it was, there was something going on. We thought at one point, oh, what, maybe he always something says, going on. Can, can we get a specialist in here to teach these guys how to stretch? Like just something <laughs> right. to, to stop these injuries. It's crazy. It's crazy. But I mean, the, the idea of it, I really don't know anything about this guy as far as, you Other know, than this, yeah. right. What you read. Um, but I like oh, the idea of it. He spent 12 years with the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee. So he was... Uh, it's a big deal. Was he the head of... I, I forget. Patient care at the Olympic Training Centers. And he was with Team USA medical staff from 2012 to 2018. So he did the Olympics in 2012, 14, 16, and 18. Yep. So, I, I mean, he's he's got extensive experience with injury prevention methods and he, he's big into research. That's another thing I had to put in the notes, but I saw that repeated over and over when I was reading about him. He does, a, like, he's very research-focused. So injury prevention research, I mean, the Olympics? Yeah. You're talking about top-tier athletes putting their bodies through some of the highest strain you can possibly put it through. Yep. And, I mean, you talk about careers that one injury derails an entire career. Or one shot, you know what I yeah. mean? You get one opportunity at you it. You work your whole life for one shot. The Olympics are brutal, man. Right. Like, right. <laughs> So I, he's never worked with the NFL before, but I think that his experience just in this realm of injury prevention with athletes and especially that lower body stuff, like you were saying, it was just ridiculous these past few years. I would be very okay if we could just have most of our starters stay healthy. I would, man, sky's the limit. Wheels up. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. And we've been saying that. We've been saying this so much. Like if this team stays healthy, man, this roster's got some, it's got some firepower. It's got yeah. some potential to do some big things this year. And I mean, injuries could really derail everything, but they tried to derail it last year. We uh, defied the odds, correct. but again, the way we're, we were defied the odds just wasn't sustainable. It's not, no. And uh, it was fun. It was really cool. But uh, I'd like to have my starters. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to have my Agreed. starters. So. Agreed. Dr. Dustin, welcome to Cleveland. I imagine he's probably going to bring some of his own like staff and people Dude, too. Yeah, like, gotta, you know, just got to think so. So I, I really, I just, I pray everybody, let's just hold hands, say a prayer that this works. 
that this somehow helps the Browns avoid all the injuries again because I just I can't do it again, dude. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, very tough. But all right, well, yeah, okay. So that's Doctor Dustin. Uh, let us know what you guys think. Was this a good move? Is this something the Browns need to do? Uh, I can't imagine you would think they don't. Um, I think every NFL team anymore could really look into this. I think it was interesting that Bob Golick, and we've said this multiple times now, but when we sat with Bob Golick and we talked about how these guys only have eight practices of contact during the summer, and, you know, before the preseason games and all that kind of stuff. Like, and I, I started to ask him, he didn't even let me finish. I started to ask him, do you think that's leading to all these injuries? And he's like, yes. Yeah. Yes. Cause he said they used to have five weeks of two a days full contact. And yep. There is something to both the physical and psychological, like he was saying, of, of getting hit. I mean, yes. it's a very violent sport, and, you know, nobody, even like me in, in high school and my prime fitness and playing football, I couldn't just walk out there day one, put on the pads, and go hit and be okay. Right. Yep. You got to condition. You got to work your way up to it. And the more you work your way into that, the mentality of hitting and being hit and the physicality, just the easier it is to take on your body and your mind and everything. So... I'm with him on that. I'm with him on that. Mm-hmm. It's kind of kind of weird that their their push to avoid injuries may be leading to Two more an injuries. increase in injuries. Yeah, but something to chew on NFL anyway. So Cedric Tillman just wanted to do a quick blurb on Cedric Tillman because he was a guy that one of the main dudes at OTAs. I know obviously Amari wasn't there. Elijah didn't come to the first session. And Jerry Judy, I think, had a little bit of like a, I think he already had like a little injury situation where he was, I mean, he was still out there running routes, but I think it kind of limited him a little bit on some of the drills. So Cedric Tillman was kind of like the top dude out there. And, you know, he's out there building that rapport with Deshaun Watson, the chemistry. We saw Tillman have some issues last year, didn't really seem to be on the same page with Mm -hmm. the playbook, the play calls with the quarterback, running his routes, breaking stuff off, not following through. But there was no denying that when, I mean, the, the dude made some grown-ass man catches. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to, for me, right now, as we sit here, it's it's crazy to think that he may be able to jump over like Elijah Moore on the depth chart. But, like, physically, if you look at those two, Cedric Tillman is probably a half a foot taller and, like, 30, 40 pounds heavier and yes. dominant and like I, f- I feel like he kind of brings like a mentality to his play you know what I mean like I, I just he kind of just is so physical with everything and like he's a guy that I'd love for everything to go through because when we drafted him we were like hey maybe this is the new Amari you know what I mean maybe this is our next number one and it just kind of never really got there he didn't really get the opportunities any of that but um physically I mean if if he can make the jump and he can beat out Elijah Moore on the depth chart my goodness could be could be huge especially if we're throwing around more my biggest argument with everybody they're like Cedric Tillman is going to be you know a big time player this year I'm like he had a lot of trouble seeing the field you know he's just kind of buried on the depth chart until there was injuries and stuff like that but you're hearing about this offense we're throwing it all over the place we're going four wide so maybe he finally does get that opportunity to come in and if it all is clicking and he's picking up the playbook better and finishing routes and all that stuff, maybe there's something to this. I think there is. And I know um, the the main kicker for this segment that you know made it onto the list for me was I was listening to a fantasy podcast uh, earlier in the week and they were talking. They just brought up Cedric Tillman randomly from the Cleveland Browns. I'm like, Cedric Tillman, I mean, they, they didn't talk about Amari, Jerry Judy, Elijah Martin. I'm like, why are they? And they said that they were hearing reports from whatever sources they had that Cedric Tillman was pretty much a lock to be a starting outside receiver for the Browns. Oh, yeah. So it was going to be Amari, Tillman, and they were going to move Jerry Judy into the slot, which I think I've been talking all the time. That's perfect. I want yeah. Judy in the slot. I would, honestly, if Elijah Moore is going to play, I want him on the outside. Mm-hmm. He's better on the outside than he is in the slot. So Cedric Tillman, to me, I, I was so excited when we drafted him. Uh, if you guys watched that draft night episode, I was I was like pumped that we got him. I, I think that he's got very good talent and very good potential. Uh, Kevin Stefanski, after the the OTAs and mini camps, his quote, which I thought, you know, there's coach speak, and then yes. there's you know, you kind of read into some things. But what he said about Cedric was interesting. He said he was here every single day. 
I don't know if that was kind of like a slight Direction. on the other guys, but yes, like, hey, look, yeah. I don't know what these other guys are doing, but I know Cedric was here every day. That's kind of how I took it. But he said he was here every single day. I know he got better because of that. I think he got better in the weight room, got better in the meeting room, and he definitely got better on the grass. To me, that's that's high praise from the head coach. From your coach, yes. yes. So that was good to see. Um, and again, you know, we had Amari on Brown on the show last week, I yeah. think, whatever. And, uh, you know, he talked about Cedric Tillman a lot. He said he's one of the main guys. Took the rookies under his wing, showing them the ropes, kind of helping them along. And it's like, I feel like Cedric Tillman is embracing this leadership role with these younger guys. And and coming in as a rookie can be tough. Yeah. You know, especially like you said, buried on the depth chart. DPJ was here. Mm-hmm. You know, they just traded for Elijah, Elijah. Moore. Yep. You know, and, and then everything, Deshaun Watson gets hurt. They're rotating through quarterbacks. The run, Nick Chubb gets hurt. They're, the run game's falling apart. It was just like... It was a mess last year. The offensive situation was just a mess. So I, I'm excited to see what Cedric Tillman can do this year. Absolutely. Isn't it kind of interesting too? Like, cause it's not like he's like a wily vet, right? He's a second year guy. He's still learning things like as far as like how to be a pros pro. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I do think it's very cool that like he's taking the rookies under, you know, his wing or whatever you want to say and kind of guiding them along. But I, you know, he's not that far removed from that situation. I think maybe that's part of it. And I think it helps that he was, you know, he was an older rookie. He was 23 when he was drafted. So he's a little more mature, a little more grown up, you would think, than, you know, maybe like a 20-year-old kid right. coming in. So it's just good to see. And again, like you mentioned, the the physicality. I mean, that block that he laid was at oh, Kyle Van Noy in yeah, Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, He had a couple blocks last year where he just laid some guys out. And again, just he made some catches. And, and it went back to, we saw it in the preseason. He was making hands Snagging. catches. Just yeah. grab, plucking that ball out of the air. Strong hands, physical, just coming through contact and everything. It's like, man, that is a, that's the type of receiver we need yes. to kind of round out this wide receiver room. So pretty excited to see what Cedric Tillman can do here in 2024. Absolutely. Okay. This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Let's all take a minute to wish happy birthday to the United States of America. And there's no better way to celebrate America's birthday than with the best meats available for your backyard cookouts this 4th of July season. Right now, you can save 50% off site-wide during the Omaha Steaks 4th of July sale. So break out the grills and get ready for the 4th of July celebrations with Omaha Steaks. Get the burgers, the chicken, the jumbo franks, the brats. Of course, get the steaks. Those things are incredible. They've got appetizers, meatballs, wings. They've got desserts. They've even got wine. They've got everything you guys need to celebrate America's birthday with your friends and your family. Go to omahasteaks.com slash dogs and use promo code dogs, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out and you'll get an extra $30 off your order. So set off the fireworks in everybody's mouth with Omaha Steaks this 4th of July. Head to omahasteaks.com slash dogs. Get 50% off site-wide during the 4th of July sale and make sure you guys punch in that promo code dogs, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out to get an extra $30 off your order. Happy 4th of July, everybody. So good news, everybody. We just got notification from our fearless leader, Blake Renneker, and he is going to pop in here at some point. So that uh, snake draft we talked about doing next week, back on. we're going to do it on this episode. So hang with us. We are going to do that today. It's going to be a ton of fun. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for Blake to come on in here. But before he does, let's talk about the Amari Cooper thing, because you brought this up right before the show. You said, I didn't really look at the whole quote. I didn't want to do the clickbait thing, meaning you didn't want to give the article a click or whatever. Right. So you did. Yeah. You read the, 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 what was the headline? Do you remember what the headline was? I can pull it up right now. Yeah. Bring it up because yeah. the headline was super misleading. I've seen this around. I've, I've actually seen some of this on Twitter about Amari Cooper speaks out about his contract or whatever. Um, this is it's from, not exactly what it's, you're being led to believe. This is from NFL.com. Man, everybody. <laughs> I hate clickbait i hate paper clicks it is ruining yeah. everything <laughs> it pisses me off this is my side strategy the whole time to see you get all fired up for oh. get worked up so article headline is brown's wide receiver amari cooper doesn't mince words quotations i'm trying to get paid this year and i'm like i read it and i was like oh jesus this is getting like that doesn't, doesn't even give, sound like amari yeah i was like this is making me feel like maybe we're going the wrong direction here on this because I feel like we need to get this done. I guarantee you they got their clicks. 
<laughs> Yo, they, they met did. their freaking quota, these idiots. Yeah, so I clicked it, and uh, it said that while he was being asked to race uh, a random person, I guess uh, somebody from a betting company, he said, I might pull my hammy. I'm trying to, I can't pull my hammy or something like that. I'm trying to get paid this year. Completely out of context. Completely <laughs> just. <laughs> not even not close even about, to what they were right, trying. Because I'm thinking like, they were like, hey, so like, what's it going to take yeah. for you to get on the field this year? And he's like, I'm trying to get paid this year. And I'm like, oh shit. Okay. Well, maybe the years and the dollars need to go up some more. I don't know. You know, now I'm caught up in my emotions and stuff like that. But yeah, apparently, um, Nothing going on on that front. That's out in the present. No, essentially, you know, the somebody public. said, hey, man, you want to race? And he says, no, nah, man, I'm not going to race. I'm trying to get paid this year. Yeah, you know, I might just, tear my just, hamstring. Yeah, oh, yeah, I have my yeah. poor hands. I'm trying to get paid. You know, just offhanded, probably nonchalant, and they pull that bullshit. Yeah. I am so sick and tired. I am so, oh, my gosh. If you guys have watched this show for the last few weeks, like, this clickbait stuff is getting bad. It's getting so bad. It's quite why I quit writing for for whatever because... I can't do it. I, 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 I'm not going to participate in this, this, oh, I just, I hate it. I you hate want it. another one? <laughs> yeah, sure. Drop CBS it. Sports. <laughs> okay. What do they have to say? Browns Amari Cooper speaks out of mid contract holdout. <laughs> I'm trying to get paid this year. <laughs> wow. Browns wide receiver Amari Cooper sends seven word message on contract standoff. <laughs> He wasn't even asked about that's the thing. That's what that's where the clickbait is so bad, guys. You got to be so careful with this shit because like right there. They they they're basically saying he was asked or they're trying to convey that he was asked about his contract and that's how he responded. He was not even asked about the contract in any way contact. shape or form. It was just some what'd you say it was a betting betting company they were called, doing. Yeah, the betting company was called better. Must like have been BET doing like a promo. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably doing a promo yeah, or a commercial. He's probably doing a commercial or something. And one of the guys offhand, like probably, yeah, said, you want to race? Yeah. And that was his response. Now I can't pull a hammy. I'm trying to get paid. Oh, these people drive me freaking. This is the best one that I've seen. This okay. is the one that's the most humble. Browns wide receiver Amari Cooper says, I'm trying to get paid this year. <laughs> well, if it just said that, I would be like, all right, well, me. I mean, hey, why aren't we all, you know, like, yeah, yeah, I right. get it. I get it. Uh, but yeah, it, uh, it's bad. So, uh, yeah, so if you guys see anything with the Amari Cooper, I want to get paid stuff, just know that it's completely out of context. He was not asked about his contract at all, and that was not a response to that question. Oh, my gosh, it's just clickbait. I'm so sick and tired of this stuff. Amari Cooper has one big goal in mind heading into 2024 season. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clip this segment and put it on YouTube, and I'm going to title it. I'm going to clickbait title this one. It's going to be Amari Cooper does not address contract <laughs> correct because that's the truth oh my god trying to get paid people. this year yeah so are the clickbait people so and the thing you know what's funny is sometimes like when i'm putting together like a twitter post or notes for a show or something i'll like go to, to go to an article i'm reading and i'll copy and paste like a section of it because i want to make sure i quote it correctly or, or yeah. use their words or it's an actual quote and i'll paste it into notes or google docs or something and the i just did this the other day with one and it was, gosh, what was it from? Uh, Browns Wire, maybe? Okay. And in one paragraph, there were three words that were misspelled. Yeah, don't, aren't people using Microsoft Word? I'm like, how the, do you misspell words? Were they like, words? so is it misspelled or is it used wrong? Like they're Mi- there? Or completely we're misspelled, just, like they had multiple L's or D's or, or a something. Or a J, like. a random J yeah. or something. Yeah, they, they were legitimately ah. misspelled. And I was like, Really? You used to get failed for that stuff in yeah. college. <laughs> I mean, okay, listen, I, I get making a mistake. But it was it was legitimately like three in one paragraph. Yeah. It's just, it's so lazy. These, And that's why just finding stuff online anymore is such a waste of time because nobody writes their own stuff. A lot of it's just copy and paste from the same source. It's the same BS over and over. Nobody does a deep dive or gives you. And I had to dig for information on this Dr. Dustin. Yeah, you did. You should have dug deeper and found out how to pronounce <laughs> found out his what name. Uh, ultra sonography and how <laughs> yeah. to pronounce his name. Yeah, I'm okay. just kidding. I'm giving you shit, man. <laughs> I'm just giving you a tough time. Touche, Justin. Touche. Uh, yeah, but seriously, I, I mean, everything that pops up on the immediate news is just a regurgitation of the same thing. Browns hire, you know, Doctor Dustin Nabin or Nabin or mm-hmm. however hell you say it, and I was, he's going to be the head of athlete health and performance. 
And that's it. I'm like, well, who is he? It's that what? time of the year too, man. Like it's, it's. Yeah. But you would think if there's not a whole lot of stuff to talk about, like you would, you would do more. Like Research. that's the thing. Like I would want my article. Like I didn't want to come on here on the podcast and just say the Browns hired this guy moving on. Like, yeah. well, who the hell is he? Let's talk about him. Let's figure out, yeah. is this a good move for the Browns? What's his experience? So, I mean, right. that's just blows my mind. These people get paid per click. That's right. And that's what sucks. You guys, I, are I just them. paid all of them. Yeah. <laughs> I just went through a bunch of them. What a freaking joke, but all right. So there we go. There's my little rant on the clickbait. Thank you for bringing all that up. No problem. No, it's good. We needed to talk about that because it's out of context. I, yeah. It's out of context. When I started seeing those things, even just going around Twitter and stuff like Amari Cooper's talking about, I'm like, Amari Cooper doesn't talk about anything. Yeah. Why? He's I haven't not, heard a peep. Yeah. I've heard Andrew Barry like kind of like barely kind of talk about it. Like, yeah. Get into it and then get off of it. You know what I mean? Yep. Which is how it should be. You know, it's a business deal. They're working something probably. I'm, this is just me saying this, but I'm guessing behind the scenes, there's probably some good dialogue going on. They're probably trying to get on the same page. I don't see them being at a stalemate. There's too much respect between both sides. Just let it yeah. get done. For me, it was just like, it would, it would have been like seeing an art or a headline. Nick Chubb speaks out about contract. Like what? Nick Chubb. Yeah. That's, that was my reaction. I was like, Amari Cooper said something. What? Mm. No. Okay. So no, he actually didn't. So thanks a lot. Idiots out there. All right. Let's <laughs> segue a little bit. Here's going to be a little bit of a cut, but we're going to be bringing Blake in. We are going to do our draft and well, we'll talk about it again once he gets in here, but stay tuned. Hope you guys enjoy that. All right. Just like we said, there's Blake. He's here. He made it. I've been here the whole time. Assholes. <laughs> yeah. We had him off screen. Mike turned off. You guys didn't even know he was here. So. I was over here like waving my arms. He's like, hey, I know how to pronounce that guy's last name. It was like when you you hand your kid the uh, Xbox controller that doesn't have any batteries in oh, it man. while you're playing and they think they're <laughs> playing too. I was just sitting over here like giving my takes. And You know, the worst is when they figure out that they're not actually playing. I haven't got there yet. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, it did not take him long. Don't tell anybody. Don't let nobody tell my child. Well, not. I actually haven't <laughs> played video games in front of her yet because it would be impossible. I would yeah. just, she would just be like, climb. Oh, yeah. yeah. She'd be like, this, this isn't going to fly in my house. <laughs> uh, I'm the captain now. <laughs> that's what she'd be, that's well what done. she'd be saying. Well done. Nice reference there. Yeah. So before we start this draft, which we've kind of already queued it up a little bit, we'll reiterate what we're doing, but did you want to give any comments or thoughts on the hiring of the uh, Dr. Dustin for the Browns medical staff? So I don't, staff? I don't know a ton about him. Okay except for um, the notes that you put together for us. Okay, it's about the so same. You're, yes, you're, you're a good guy for doing this. Um, but I will say this. I feel like I've been beating on the drum about overhauling the medical staff and the way we approach medicine and injury pre uh, prevention and rehab almost the entire time we've been on this podcast. Because I've said, why, why is it the Browns are having so many soft uh, tissue injuries. I feel like we are at the top of the league every year in the, in these kinds of injuries. Um, and then obviously last year, like unbelievable how many injuries we had. And obviously it's a full contact sport with grown men. Injuries are going to happen. I'm not going to say you can point at a doctor and say, this is your fault that this guy broke his forearm when it got crushed between, between two helmets. Okay. We're not saying that, but there is something to be said about prevention. And I see he specializes in injury prevention that's huge. Like there are, there are teams that have kind of gone to maybe what you would be considered like not the norm in terms of the way they think about medicine or rehab. And, and they look at things that other people might not think of. And you see their injuries, especially soft tissue injuries and non-contact injuries go way down because they're thinking outside the box. So I think it's huge for the Browns to, to roll the, try something new and get some, some new blood in here because I, I, I am tired of seasons being derailed by injury. And I'm not saying that the Browns have had loaded rosters my whole life and we wouldn't have been the laughing stock for 25, 30 years if we had a uh, better, better medical team. But you, you've also heard past Browns players kind of talk about the medical team. Like, look at what, how they handled Odell, even uh, Baker, Deshaun last year. Like, there's been lots of stuff with injuries in the Browns organization as we've been – even long before this podcast where it's like, what are we doing? So I, I think it's a good hire. Anything we can do to try to 
limit the soft tissue and the non-contact injuries, like the preventable stuff as as preventable as injuries can be, you know what I mean? In a, in a sport like this, but I think it's a good hire. I like it. Well, you'll like that. Cause we gave you your flowers before yes. you got here and said, Blake's been harping on this for years. Yeah. So, and, and some people said, I was, there's a lot of times I say things on here and people say, I, I'm an idiot. I can be an idiot. Uh, but then it turns out like <laughs> full circle and I wasn't so good for me, I guess. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, and what else? You guys talk about Cedric Tillman? Yeah, we just talked a little bit about Ced. Did you have anything on him you wanted to mention? I just, I, I, I saw some of the same things you, uh, that you saw about how I heard Stefanski talk about him, said he's gotten better everywhere and on the grass. Yep. Um, I've heard some other things like he's been, he looked really good in, uh, in OTAs and stuff, and he played well. Um, so, nothing. <laughs> What do you want me to do, bro? <laughs> what do you want? I can't just start busting up laughing. Uh, yes, you can. Okay. Uh, so we're getting loose here. I, you know, I was sitting over here the whole time, not on mics, and I'm just gonna be in loose. Getting all out. I want. Yeah. Uh, in terms of what kind of leap I expect to take from him, I think it's all about opportunity. I, I know we're going to run more, you know, wide open three, four wide receiver sets. The offense is going to be more pass happy and that kind of stuff. So I would, I would assume he's going to take a leap statistically as opposed to what he did last year, you would think he's going to take that leap. Um, but do I think he's going to come out and put up eight, 900 yards and six or seven touchdowns? I wouldn't, don't know if I'd go that far as if he's going to be the, uh, the true number. Th- he's not even, he's a th- probably the four, the number four. I think, I mean, c- can we get 400 yards out of him? You know, two to four touchdowns. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Then I think maybe like we could consider that a successful season for Tillman. And it at least gives you confidence in him that maybe he can move up to a three or a number three or number two receiver. Once, you know, like Amari Cooper is out, uh, not here anymore. If Elijah Moore isn't here for a second t- uh, contract and that kind of stuff, maybe it gives you a little bit of faith that he can step into that role. If he, he produces in a more limited role. Um, I just don't think like, you're not going to sit Cooper, Judy Moore. You're not going to wait, take away targets from David and Joku to be getting Cedric Tillman the ball, unless he forces your hand, unless he really has gone from like, you know, what he was last year to just a guy like, well, there's, he's making it so we can't keep the ball out of his hands. Like he's just playing that well, then good for us. But I just, I think the opportunities are going to be limited in terms of where he is on the depth chart. I think sometimes, you know, we talk about like running backs will get maybe some opportunities because they're good at pass pro. I think Cedric will get some opportunities just strictly because they need him on the field to block. Yeah, but there's going to be run plays. Sure, but then you, know, then you get maybe some audible you know, situations and things like that where they check out of it and go to a pass play. You know, and I think down around the red zone. He is a big body guy, and he, we saw him last year. He, he made he, – he hand catches. Yeah. He doesn't let the ball get in on his chest. Like He goes up and plucks it out of the air. So I do like him as a red zone target. Um, and I, I liked Cedric Tillman's rookie year. I know it like wasn't gaudy statistically, but he played tough. And, and he might have made some mental mistakes, you know, as any rookie would. But, man, I, I thought he showed promise as a rookie, especially as a rookie who, let's be honest, even though we got rid of DPJ so he could step into that role, what role was he taking from DPJ, a guy who had 98 yards? It's not like DPJ was, you know, getting so many targets and then uh, so we got rid of him so Cedric Tillman could get those targets. DPJ wasn't getting targets either, you know. So um, I do think he'll have more opportunity this year, though, just based on the offense we're supposed to run. And by all accounts, we have been running. And it's actually different this year, not the fake different that we got last year. Yeah, the fake different we got last year was very disappointing. But now we're hearing players actually talk about it. So when players say stuff, that means a little more than just media people talking about, oh, yeah, it's going to be different. Or, you know, even coaches saying it like because the players out there actually doing it. So. All right. You guys want to draft? Yeah, I do. This episode is brought to you by Bodden Sports. Browns fans, Bodden Sports is your one-stop shop for all your athletic gear. Bodden started out perfecting and manufacturing the best balls in the business. Yeah, if that sounded dirty, that's more about your mind than my words. But hey, it's true. Baseball, softballs, footballs, basketballs, volleyballs, soccer balls, you name it. And Bodden has engineered the highest standard sports balls available. And now they offer more than just sports balls. If you got kids playing baseball or softball, Bodden has batting gloves and bats to go along with both game balls and training balls. If you're into basketball, Bodden makes basketball specifically for indoor or outdoor use. Heck, Bodden even has all the equipment you need for pickleball, which is one sport that I hear everyone is playing and yet I still never have. And I need to fix that soon. 
But don't miss the backyard game section of Bodden's website where you can order everything you need for this upcoming outdoor season. Pool balls, backyard volleyball, nets, croquet, bocce, horseshoes, cornhole, and more. Right now, you can get 10% off your entire order at Bodden Sports, B-A-D-E-N sports.com slash dogs, D-A-W-G-S, and use promo code dogs when you check out. That's 10% off all the top quality sporting gear you need this season. Bodden sports.com slash dogs. All right, so like we said at the top of the show, uh, we, we're now doing it today because Blake made it in. We are going to do a five-round snake draft. We're going to draft, correct me if I say this wrong, guys, our top fictional characters from sports movies. Is that right? Correct. Yes. Okay. This so, was an idea from the Discord. Yep. We threw it out to them, which maybe you guys covered this. Basically, there wasn't a lot of Browns news. So we we're like, hey, what's some stuff you guys want us to talk about? I told him it didn't have to be sports if they didn't want to. It could be treat this like an after hours episode. Right. Maybe I'd say the F word. <laughs> Maybe you still will. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think this is a great idea. So we're going to each build a lineup. We're going to do a snake draft. We're going to have five picks. And at the end of this, we're just going to put it on social media and you guys vote for it. And, and it's not based on, it's not based on anything like who do we think here is like the better athlete. It's just like, who is our favorite? I guess you could say, Who's going to have the coolest five team squad? Right, right. I guess is the is the criteria for this. Okay, so that's definitely uh, not me. All right. <laughs> so I've got the I've got our names in a generator. So here we go. I'm going to randomize to find out the order, and it's going to go Blake, Justin, me. Okay. So Blake, you have the 101. Then it's going to go Justin. Then I'll have two in a row. Back to Justin. Then Blake will have two in a row, and on we go. <sighs> okay. I I didn't want the first pick because. <laughs> Want to trade it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so I'm going to go, maybe this is another people's number one. This is one of my favorite sports movies growing up, and it still is one of my favorite sports movies. And I think it's maybe one of the most quoted sports movies for sure, at least some scenes. And number one, I'm going to take quarterback John Moxon oh. from Varsity Blues. Oh, okay. okay. Wow, that's a movie I've not seen in a long time. Jonathan Moxon. Oh, I wow. don't want your life. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking love. For, I almost went with Tweet or Teeter, mm-hmm. uh, the dude who steals the cop car. Tan, 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 tan. <laughs> That's, uh, but I went with the quarterback, uh, James Vanderbeek, in the role of a lifetime. And that's, I mean, Varsity Blues is that's a classic. I Man. freaking love that movie. That's been a long time for me. Okay. <sighs> okay. Justin's up. Listen, so I'm just going to get a big one out of the way, right? Because I'm worried that it won't make it. But, you know, give me Rocky Balboa. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, is there, for me, there, uh, there's not a more iconic sports guy that's fictional. You know what I mean? He, he has a, le- a legit statue. Yes. Like he's a real person. Yes. <laughs> they, he's fictional. Yes. And he's fictional, but you would not know that, you right. know, like, no, that's. And all those movies are super solid. Even the worst one is I still like it. It's right. just the worst one, five. We can all agree five is the worst, Fair. right? Yes. And then even as crazy as it was with uh with just Balboa mm-hmm. and he fights the like the young dude when he's old, great freaking movie. Yeah. Like yeah. still very good. And then obviously the Creed movies are awesome. Yes. And Creed two is like talk about a send off for a guy. Mm. Like it just I, I I love yeah, that's a good pick. For okay. sure. All right. So now I'm up. I got two in a row. And, oh, man, there's, like, I like this. I, I, there's so many guys on my list I want. I'm going to go ahead, and for my first pick, I'm going to take Bobby Boucher. That's Water a boy. good pick. So I'm taking Bobby Boucher. That's and a then, good pick. Um, my, 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 my mama says. <laughs> it's a great I, pick. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and stick with it right here. I'm just going to take Happy Gilmore. So I'm Damn taking it. Both of them. I'm taking both. I knew um, you were going to do Happy Gilmore. Yeah, I'm just going to take Adam Sandler. Back to back here. So Bobby Boucher from the water boy, happy Gilmore from his name movie. What of, um, how do we feel about a happy Gilmore too? It's, it's happening. I don't like that, bro. I don't think they should mess with it. I wish I don't like wouldn't. that. It's I'll it's watch one, it. It's Me one too. of those things where, um, Adam Sandler, like serious movies have remained pretty good over mm-hmm. the years, but it seems like his comedy has nosedived. So I'm, I'm curious to see. I mean, what, don't give up how yet. This will be. Leo was solid. <laughs> Which one? Leo. Did you see Leo? Oh, that is lizard. With the movie? lizard? Oh, oh that's no. A, yeah. Bro. Is it good? Yes. 
I didn't watch Leo. I was super th- solid. I, we're like a three movie rotation in my house. I can't get anything new in there. I was Leo thinking, in there. I was thinking like of you know Jack and Jill. Mm. Uh, okay. Although uh, he's my boy was actually pretty funny. It's stupid, but what it's uh what's funny. the one with uh, Jennifer Aniston? Just go with it or yeah. whatever. I thought that was solid, bro. You didn't like that. Yeah, I mean, eh. it's just, it's not Happy eh. Gilmore. I mean, think okay. about this run he went on with. He did. Little Happy Nicky. Gilmore, uh, Big Daddy, uh, Billy Madison, yes. yeah. Mr. Deeds. Yeah. Like, yeah. we're talking about, a, like, it's yeah. like, it's a Hall of Fame run. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You're going to have some off seasons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Justin, who's your number two pick? Uh, My number two pick. I just, something that's close to home. I just went with. Ricky Vaughn, wild thing. Oh, he was on my list. I, to I me, probably should. I probably should have grabbed that while I had the chance. To me, I, it was another like no brainer pick. Still to this day, like one of my favorite movies. I almost took him number with my number one. I, it's that's where I almost took him with my first pick because I was like, it might not get back to me. That's a but, good pick. Obviously, okay. Wild thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's wild a good thing, one. Bro. I mean, we 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 like he his song and his entrance is like iconic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Great and major league's just iconic. Iconic, yeah, it really is. It's not like dra- Like dra- I feel like Cleveland fans love draft day because th- it's about Cleveland. Mm-hmm. But if you're not a Cleveland fan, like I think even as Browns fans, we can all admit draft day is definitely like a C minus quality movie. Okay, but I love it because it's Kevin Costner and yes. it's draft day. Did I tell you guys about my experience the last time we watched? I watched draft day before the draft. I can't remember if it was this year, or last year. Me and Megan and. After the movie was over, so it ends and everything, she, she looks at me and she goes, so what happened after that? Oh, shit. <laughs> they, they played. They played football. They probably went 2-14. and 14. She, she was like, she was dead serious. Like, that wasn't like a documentary. I said, no. She said, then what was the point? It's about draft day. It's about draft day. Yeah. Uh, but I think even if you are if you are not a Cleveland Indians fan or a Cleveland sports fan, you know, major like major league yeah. is that good. Mm. Uh, but speaking of draft day, that's going to bring me to my number two pick. Okay. I'm going to go with Sonny Weaver Jr. Great. Nice. Okay. Uh, and for all the things I just said, I, it might be a C quality movie to you to outsiders, but to me, hits home. Yeah, hits he, home, bro. His <laughs> Sonny Weaver Jr. just gets shit done. Mm. Okay, so uh, I I went with Sonny Weaver Jr. And then I'm going to bring it back around. I think I'm going to go. So I had, I had another guy on here also played by Kevin Costner, but I'm not going to double up on the Kevin Costner. I doubled up Adam Sandler, baby. You did. You did. But I'm (laughs) going to, I'm going to switch it up here and I'm going to go Peter LaFleur. Oh, from Dodgeball. He was on my short list. It's Vaughn. I think, uh, I think that's also getting a sequel. Maybe I think I heard that. Is that getting a sequel? Uh, Or maybe is that one of those fake things? I'm not sure. Not interested, but Excellent. Yes. I almost took Ben Stiller's character. Okay. I was like, oh, I gotta, he list. loses. <laughs> so I, I'm going to go, but another iconic. Yep. I mean, super quotable. I had him on my list. So Peter LaFleur uh, is my, my pick. Okay. Well, with uh, my third pick, I'm going to go with Ricky Bobby. Ricky from uh, Talladega Nights. That was going to be my next. Uh, just... Shaking Classic, baby. bro. Like, well, you know, I just wake up and I piss excellence. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're, if you're not first or last, like to me, I love Will Ferrell. And the first time I watched it, I was like, man, that was super over the top, but I couldn't get over how great it was. I, it's one of those things too. Like, uh, I've been drinking Mountain Dew all day. Yeah. Uh, spider monkey, baby Jesus. I don't know what to do with my hands. Yes. There's like, 25 one-liners in that movie that Remember, get yes. quoted daily somewhere in around you break it <laughs> so yes great pick yes thank oh, you well that just made my decision because that was going to be my next pick so uh let's see what do i want to do i'm going to go with first pick here I'll t- i'm going to take shane falco oh from the wait. replacements i Ouch. didn't put i was i knew i was missing somebody yep Ouch. get myself a quarterback uh to fill in here and uh, yeah, give me People's some quarterback. It's good. Give me some Keanu that Reeves on my list. Definitely one of my favorite sports movies. Yeah, mine too. I, I've watched it every time it's on TV. I just sit there and watch it for a little bit, but it's awesome. I got a guy that I think, I think he'll probably come back to me, but I don't want to risk 
I don't know. I'm just going to take him because I love this show. I'm taking Thad Castle from Blue Mountain State. <laughs> okay. so, a lot of comedy on jo- uh, Josh's list. You, you can kind of see what kind of sports movies I got into as, as mm-hmm. a younger person. I, I loved the comedy stuff. If you, I, have, if you guys have, I, I'm sure everybody's watched Blue Mountain State, right? But if you haven't, go check it out. That is good. a freaking hilarious show. Yeah, and if you like that guy, watch Reacher. Mm. It's awesome. Oh, I didn't even, re- yeah, you're right. It's awesome. Yep. <laughs> That's a good pick. I love Blue Blue Mountain State. Well, if you like that pick, I've got something for you here. <laughs> At fourth, for my fourth pick, I'm going with Gordon Bombay. Oh, Ooh, wee, with some fire. Come on now. Coach the Mighty Ducks. And for me, my, the Mighty Ducks 2 is the best one. When they oh, go against sure. Iceland and uh, <laughs> the coach. Oh, dude. It's co- like for me, that's. Like that's one of those movies when I was a kid. Like I, I just I, I still watch the, I still watch the Mighty Ducks semi regularly. And yeah. what's really funny is um, Iceland. I actually saw this. Iceland is like this powerhouse hockey team in the movie and all this. They're awful in real life. Tricksters. Awful. Like, uh, but I forget. Like the writer of the movie picked Iceland because of I forget what the reason was, and he just had no idea about soccer or hockey history. But like they had never even played in tournaments, and then when they finally did start playing tournaments, they always like they're just not they were not good at hockey. For I don't know if they are now, <laughs> but they were like they were basically the Browns of the hockey world for our whole lives. So. All I can picture right now is just the director going, "Who should they go against?" Like country wise, how about Iceland? Because it's covered <laughs> in ice, right? <laughs> No. Okay. Whatever. Go ahead. Go go do your pick. I got one more for you. Uh, So it's my turn. So this is my last two picks. So there's a lot of pressure here to put together. So as a runner up, I'm not going to make this pick, but because you just said Gordon Bombay, I actually had the Bash Brothers on here. Nice. I didn't know if you guys would let me pick the Bash Brothers as a pair or if that'd be considered two picks. No, I would consider that a pick. I just... I think so. uh, But I'm going to go with... So this is for some of my picks. These are very uh, like '90s kids, millennial picks. Oh, that's what I'm doing. I'm going with Andy Brink Brinker oh. from Brink. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, it was, Br- wasn't even on my radar. Oh, when, oh when, my when, gosh, I watched that show so many freaking times. When they suggested <laughs> sports movies, this is no lie. <laughs> Brink was like the first movie that popped. I was like, oh, I'm taking Andy Brink Brink. Oh Here my gosh, dude. Just, that's hilarious. Just skate better. Just skate better. <laughs> Team Puppin Suds. <laughs> Team Puppin. Wow. I watched Brink within the last 365 days. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I'm not lying. Is it on Disney Plus? It is. There you go. Oh, so, shit. I might have to because I'll tell you what, I watched that so many times as a kid because, I mean, you watched the. It was Disney Channel, and there was no streaming kids out there. Yeah. So, I mean, it was what was on the TV guide, and when it was Brink on the Disney originals. Listen, kids kids today have no idea. Like, the Disney Channel original movies back in the day completely shit on anything they put out now. It's not even – first of all, we had Boy Meets World, which is in a, a different level of the cheap spinoff Girl Meets World, whatever they put out. But we got movies like Brink, Alley Cat Strike, mm. Motocross, <laughs> okay. Luck of the Irish, uh, the thir- the 13th year. Uh, like we got the famous Jet Jackson. Oh, sh- oh man, Thompson look at Young. this. You are calling this it. This is the most research he's ever done. <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> this is a research <laughs> recall. Johnny Tsunami. Yes. Yes. And, and now they just put out garbage. Yeah. It's just terrible. It's just like corny. And awful t- stuff they put out now. Another thing that kids nowadays will never have to experience is sitting in front of the TV on channel, whatever it was, 20. It's 47 back in the oh, day. 40, watching watching the, the TV guide scroll up and oh, down and died. just just sitting there going, okay, what's coming on here in a half hour? Please don't and, be the color and of it's like, okay, and, and when you turn it there, it's channel three. It's like, oh, I want to know what's on channel 54. Oh, and then if you have, if you miss it, you got to wait again. Yep. You got to wait again. There was no internet or any way to just quickly look it up. So I'm going Andy Brink Brinker. Good one. Uh, with my fourth pick and with my final pick, I think I am going to go. So my, my top five all got, I got four of my top five and you picked wild thing. Uh, I'm terrified. I, I didn't want to take another Kevin Costner character. Oh God. Well, I will reveal if one of you guys doesn't take him. So I'm going to go with Henry Rowengartner. Okay. 
That's the rookie of the year pitcher, the kid who break who hurts his oh. arm and then gets to throw fastballs. And Gary Busey's his coach. That's great. Rookie a, of the year. That's a that's Goated a throwback, movie. bro. Yes. Well, when you said the name, I was like, I don't know. What's his name, Henry? What? Is. Rowan Gartner. <laughs> Whatever. I'll figure it out later. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when I put the graphics. Rookie of the year. Movie. Great, great movie. movie. That's the kid from American Pie. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. You're right. Yeah, he's got a band now. Oh, I, I, I've like known this kid's whole life now. Oh, I've been ships. following him since his rookie season. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Tell me. I love rookie of the year, though. So yeah. Yeah. that's my... I guess if, if you pick me to, uh, that I have the coolest team, you also just can't get enough of like our old 90s movie. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Um, for my last pick, uh, and I kept this one close to the vest here. I almost went with Danny. All right. But I just was like, can't be Danny. It's got to be Becky O'Shea. Icebox. Little Giants. Are we serious right now? Come on, guys. Oh, my God. Emancipation of uh, Puerto Rico. Yes, I know. Come on, man. I haven't watched it enough to know, like, the main characters' names. Oh, it's Danny O'Shea. It's Becky O'Shea. (laughs) I do remember. She was very good. Great fucking movie. That shit (laughs) is fucking... I would watch that right now, and it probably is terrible. But when I was a kid... Man, I love. I want this. I still watch like the Honey I Shrank the Kids it's movies. Great. It's great, Honey I Blew Up the Kids. Yes, all of them. Mm. All the all Honey the movies. Mm. All them. All them blowing them things up yes. and shrinking them. All the yes. blowing movies. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, Josh. So I'm I'm ending this thing. Yes. Yeah. All right. So I'm kind of between two guys, and uh, I know which one I'm going to go with. I, I was going to take White Goodman. I'm not, but I, I had him on my list. I actually had him ahead of Peter LaFleur just because I think White Goodman from Dodgeball is just, Classic. that is a character right there. But I'm going to, I've already got two of them. I might as well take another Adam Sandler. I'm taking Paul Crew from The Longest Yard. Ooh, uh, okay. It's another which, solid, very solid, solid sports choice. movie. I watched that movie so many times as well. I just, not, not the older one, just whenever the new one came out, mm-hmm. that's kind of when it hit me. And yeah, I just yes. latched onto that movie. I was like, I love this movie. RIP so. caretaker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn, bro. Brucey. Heavy. Brucey should be in. Heavy. Uh, okay. So my, my, one of my runner ups, the guy who didn't quite, who Henry Rowan Gardner beat out was Roy McAvoy, Tim cut. Okay. Tim Cutt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Costner's just a good sports movie. I didn't know if yeah. you were going to go with that or like Field of Dreams or Old Durham. Yeah, like I, I had some choices, but of those movies, Tin Cup is. I'm a very big Tin Cup fan. Okay. So, uh, to recap, you got them all, or you want me to read them? Uh, read off your. Yeah, let's just read each our own. Okay, so my team is John Moxon, quarterback of the East Texas High. Cougars, maybe? I can't remember. <laughs> He's the quarterback in Varsity Blues. Sonny Weaver Jr., mythical GM of the Browns, who, on, let's be honest, if our real-life GM pulled the things he did, we'd all hate him. But, man, he told that guy to go eat his fucking pancakes, and that just gets me every time. Uh, <laughs> Peter LaFleur from Dodgeball. Andy Brink Brinker from Team Pup and Spot Suds. Jeez. And Henry Rowan Gartner, rookie pitcher for the Cubs. Took the league by storm. Uh, I went with uh, Rocky Balboa, Ricky Wild Thing Vaughn, uh, Ricky Bobby, Gordon Bombay. Gordon Bombay is such a good solid bro. I knew. I, I watched knew. the Mighty Ducks reboot just because he was in it, even yes. though it was the, the super corny show. And then they didn't bring him <laughs> back for season two because of stupid reasons. And yeah. I never watched another episode. Not going back. Nope. Yep. And then I finished off my uh, draft with Becky O'Shea Icebox from Little Giants. That's a solid team. I know. Yeah, I, I like your team, man. So I've got Bobby Boucher from The Water Boy. I've got Happy Gilmore from Happy Gilmore. Shane Falco from The Replacements. Thad Castle from Blue Mountain State. And Paul Crew from The Longest Yard. So I got a couple QBs, a good linebacker, uh, a golfer, and a water boy. Actually, I got two linebackers. That's fair. I, uh, this opened up so many, like we could do snake drafts of like best Disney channel, original. Oh, I think we should totally do best, like best, uh, fictional quarterbacks. Mm. Uh, you got, you got, uh, Shane Falcon, like Keanu Reeves be on the list more than once. Johnny Utah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. so yeah, this, uh, this opens up a, a a world of possibilities for off season shows. I'll get into everything. 
I'm yeah, I, I like this idea of Ooh. doing these little snake drafts. So we can do more of these for sure. I know. Before we did this, Best I told low movies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> do you want to know who my rookie was? That I yes, I said, I'd love to hear. So that. I told I told them that I there's a guy I can't pick because it's not a sports movie, but he's a sports character in a sports movie. He was a rookie, took the league by storm. And he was the best damn seeker Hogwarts had seen in a long time. Oh, it was Harry Potter. God. That's the nerdiest answer. And I love Jeez. it. But uh, I couldn't do it because it's, it's not technically a sports movie. It's so. not. Cause I would have taken Victor Crumb. <laughs> 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 oh, man. We're, like I said, we're very Ooh. big nerds. Yes. We're very big nerds. Yeah. We're uh, on summer break with the Browns. So, I mean, this is what you get. Yes. We're going to make terrible blow jokes and talk about Harry <laughs> Potter. <laughs> No thing. Oh man, let no. us know what you guys think. Who has the coolest team? I feel like it, it just very. It's going to be very dependent on age group. Yeah, <laughs> and, and like, what's your what's your thing? Like, are you a, like a diehard Adam Sandler fan? Because then you're definitely going to pick Josh. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you like some of the throwbacks, like I mean, I feel I don't even know how many people are going to know who Andy Brink Brinker is. It might. If you're a '90s kid, you know who Andy yeah. Brink Brinker is. You know who Team Puppin Suds is. Yeah. Oh yeah, they freaking skated better. <laughs> And I want to go watch that movie. Oh, uh, my! One of my favorite things from that movie is, and I see it all the time. It's like back before Hollywood knew how to do uh, black people's hairlines. The one dude who's on like the evil team, the one black kid, his hairline is so bad. It's it's like a disgrace to the entire culture. And I'm not saying I speak for the culture, but you guys know it's so bad. Just go look it up. It's like it like. Goes like from here, and like barely gets. And it's like a perfect circle, like around his face. It's terrible. Great movie though. Uh, so let us know what you guys think. I'm excited to see uh, see the reactions to this one, uh, and let us know some other fun ideas if uh, if you guys have any. Because unless you just wanted to get real stupid up in the show, we need ideas uh, to <laughs> get us through the off season. We do have some some pretty cool stuff coming yeah. up. Hopefully in the next month. Um, and I think that's going to be really, really cool. I don't want to tell any, unless you guys told people, no, we didn't, we're going to keep that under wraps until it actually happens. Cause we don't want to, we don't want to tease you. Uh, and, and then something not to fall through. Yeah. yeah and have something it to fall blow through. up. Yeah. And we look, <laughs> Oh, nice. And we yep. look stupid in your face. Or right. if like it does come true and we tell you now, and then we keep telling you about it. It's like, we're edging you until then. <laughs> You're a fucking idiot, bro. <laughs> oh man. So we don't want it, we don't want it to go either way. We don't want it to fall apart and like not happen. We don't want you to just be like really worked up until then. So <laughs> So we're gonna keep it under wraps until oh, it boy, happens. This one really went off the rails. I know it's not my fault. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, guys. So. Me either. Uh <laughs> yeah, shouldn't have ignored me for the first thirty minutes. Sorry. Of the show. Yeah, yeah, that was our mistake. Yeah. Never do that again. Uh, so let us know what you guys think. Let us know if you guys have any ideas uh, for future episodes. Let us know what you guys think of uh, the new the new medical hire. You think it's a good thing for the Browns? You think it's going to help prevent any injuries? Do you think uh, that it's just a crapshoot and nothing we do is going to matter? Uh, I do think there's some there's something to switching up your your thinking, thinking outside the box, and getting new blood in there that can hopefully help with some prevention of uh, some of the preventable injuries. Uh, Let us know what you guys continue to think of the Amari Cooper contract situation. That is still ongoing, still something to watch for the Browns. Uh, That's a big thing on our radar. um, We appreciate you guys being here, hanging out with us throughout a long off season. Even when there's not much Brown stuff to talk about, you guys still tune in, help support the show. We appreciate it. Uh, Like I said, we got hopefully big things on the horizon coming up with the next three to four weeks that I think you guys will really like. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Make sure you guys have the notification bell tapped so you don't miss any of it. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. And don't click the clickbait. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com. This episode is brought to you by Danger Coffee. 
Browns fans, we talk about how Danger Coffee is made free from mold toxins that are in 45% of the world's coffee, but that's not all that Danger Coffee has to offer. Mineral and nutrient deficiencies are a big deal. They make you feel sick, tired, stressed, and they can give you brain fog. These deficiencies negatively affect your immune system, your digestion, sleep, metabolism. Have you ever wondered why you get an initial burst from your coffee? But then you get that little crash not long after. Danger Coffee's patent pending process remineralizes your body with more than 50 trace minerals and electrolytes, leaving you more energized, engaged, powerful. These micronutrients enter the cells to boost performance. They bind to toxins to provide detoxification support. I know that sounds like a lot, but the bottom line, guys, is minerals matter. And most of us really don't get enough of them on a daily basis. Danger Coffee delivers micronutrients, plus it gives you access to the minerals you already have. Head to DangerCoffee.com, use our code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, for 10% off your order. And that code can be used over and over, so you get 10% off every order you make using code DOGS. It's time to start every day off with a cup of coffee that gets you going and actually keeps you going. DangerCoffee.com. Code dogs.